have been some fascinating cases where there's a lot of uh, detailed investigation with computers and phone records and things that you know could be on TV for the kind of uh, investigations that they do. They do them very well. Um, they solve cases. I think it's important that we recognize the good work that everybody does every, all year long, and uh, it gets everybody out and together. And, and, and it's great that the council members could come out to this and and participate in, in the city manager. Organizing this was, it's a lot of work. Um, a whole bunch of us put a lot of heart into doing this because it's a very special event. We celebrate each other's achievements throughout the year and this is the way that we show it. I think it really adds to the morale of, of the officers and the department overall. This is, especially nowadays, this is kind of a thankless job and sometimes we're reviewed as the other side or the enemies, but you know, everyone that gets in this job <clears throat> gets in it to help people and uh, help the area they're working for. It just feels, you know, it feels good, you know, and, and a lot of people might not want to, to admit that, but it, it does, it makes people feel better when they're appreciated and just sometimes a simple thank you, whether it's, you know, on the street or while you're eating breakfast with some of your partners and someone comes by and just says thank you or an event like this where, you, you know, you might be uh, fortunate enough to win an award. It just uh, makes you feel appreciated. Doing an award assembly, we can like come together and, um, you know, I can meet um, all the officers, family members, wives, uh, fathers, daughters. Um, it's a, just a good time just to spend time with each other and just to appreciate what we do all, all through like a year. It gives us a chance to appreciate what these officers bring to the table in our community. It gives them a chance to be rewarded for what they do. And they stand out because they do what they do. It's great. I mean, the diversity in the community officers you work with. Uh, it's a place that I've actually grown up in, so um, understanding the community and of course all the support you get from that department, uh, especially our chief right now. He's a great chief. He's probably one of the best chiefs I've ever worked for and I've worked under at least three before him. You know, there's always room for improvement. We always try to be the best we can be, uh, but you know, I think that law enforcement in general has taken it on the chin this year and, and a good portion of it's not deserved, and, uh, but it's not news if the other way around. So uh, a lot of times we don't uh, promote what we do, and uh, we don't tell people and let them know the good work that goes on, and that's part of what this ceremony is about. It's hard to pick the good events, which one's better. I mean, it's because there's so much good police work that goes on, you know, almost on a daily basis. But I think it just highlights what goes on, and I think people, you know, people appreciate the recognition. The way we communicate with our citizens, we're always there to hear what they have to say. I've never encountered any negativity with our community. We go out there and we do everything we can to help the community out, um, answer all their questions, uh, be a support for them when they need us. Officer of the Year saved almost, uh, closed almost 90 percent of the investigations. Uh, that came to him. That's an absolutely unimaginable rate for most departments. Congratulations for Officer of the Year for 2014. It's a very uh, prestigious award, um, but I really can't take credit for all of it because in, uh, in the investigative uh, division, we work as a team, and um, I was uh, fortunate to have a good staff that helped me to achieve this award. Well, you just have to um, follow up on your cases, have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the victims, and so, like, like you know, like just call them every day. Um, just follow up on your cases uh, correctly, then, like, you won't have any, uh, any, I mean, it could be a problem, but it's really not a problem, as long as you follow up on your cases. The best thing is to be appreciated by your fellow officers. Um, who know that you've done a good job, and I think that this is the best way to show it. It's unique because we're a small agency that work in a small geographic area, but we're full service. So what it lets us do is give uh, more time and attention to calls for service or crime trends or citizens' needs than if uh, we were a large agency covering a large geographic area. It means we can take more pride in the day-to-day -day business and uh, you know do better, more thorough investigations and uh, have more open lines of communication with our citizens because being uh, you know, a small agency of just 42 officers, uh, when something does happen, pretty much the whole department's involved, uh, whether it's the patrol division or criminal investigation division or the traffic division, everything's all, all encompassing and it's, uh, it's really you know, one unit 
and, and one uh, group of officers all working towards the same mission. Recently, uh, the special assignment team and a couple of other, other members put together a picnic in, a, in an area where you know they, they don't usually see the police in, in a positive light, uh, where there's a lot of drug dealing going on, and the, there, there's decent people that live there that you know sometimes are afraid to come out of their houses, and they, they were able to enjoy the evening. This is a great department to work for. It's a small department, so we're a little bit unique. Uh, we all know each other. This is like a big family. We, uh, we get along most of the time. Sometimes we don't, but we always uh, cover for each other. We always have each other's backs, and um, it's, there's a lot of loyalty here in this department. I think one of the things that sets the Tacoma Park Police Department high when it's compared to other departments is the professionalism of the, of the staff the good training that there is. We don't hear the same kind of um, problems that we might hear in some other departments, partly because there's a lot of care given to how to handle situations, how to uh, get to know the community and be able to identify problems because they know the community and they know the people in it. Uh, and I think they also um, have a comfort level with what they're doing that they don't overreact. Serious crime is, has continued to go down as far as crimes against persons. Property crimes, uh, mostly vehicle related crime has gone up slightly, uh, but that's a regional wide issue. Um, you know, crime as of right now in many, many locations is going up to 1970s level and we want to be proactive and prevent that from happening in, in the city. Lunch and Learn started when Essex House Apartments became a part of Ward 5. I had a meeting with the residents and asked them, what do they want? How can I be helpful? And everyone said it's kids programs, something for the young people that live in the building. A few weeks later, I had another meeting with a gentleman by the name of Dewan Hopewell. He used to be part of an organization called Share Our Strength. He told me something that I never knew was possible. Only 20% of the kids that are on free and reduced meals get some type of food during the summer. So I said, how do I put these two big issues together and help my community? So that's how Lunch and Learn was born. It started in Essex House Apartments in their community room. There were so many kids that it was busting at the seams. We had to find another location. Year two, we went to Washington Ventures University, but we said we could have even more kids. So year three, we're at John Nevins Andrews School in Tacoma Park with 110 kids. Children would receive two meals a day at the school, and when school's out, they don't have this. And so we wanted to add a learning component to it and make sure that they get the meals, the nutrients that they needed, and also keep brushing them up on reading and math. And so we started in my apartment building in my community room. And that year we had about 30 kids and now we're at 109. The kids usually lose a lot of information during the summer what they've learned all year, school year. And so we keep them abreast on what they've learned in the past. We have them submit report cards so that we can see where they're weak at and we target at that. And this year we offered something new, which is computer lab and swimming. Uh, swimming is a lifelong skill that a lot of kids don't have and didn't have. And uh, computer lab is also another skill that they maybe can take with them throughout their career. This is the pool where you swim and learn. So the stuff we do here at Lunch and Learn Camp, we, we learn about computers. 
we get to um, do social activities with other kids, and we get to learn math and algebra. And I've learned a lot of math here that I did not know. And a lot of the stuff I didn't know that were gonna happen here, that they improved. And I learned a lot about computers, and I should learn how to fix my own computer at home and rebuild one. Learn to Learn program is fun because um, we don't only learn, we get to play and like we have other activities like going to the pool and like going on field trips and other things. We get to do curricular activities and also have fun at the same time. Hi people! I love the Lunch and Learn program because we don't want uh, anybody's summer to go to waste. I have visited the program and hung out with the kids and they um, are doing incredible stuff here. They're doing swimming and they're playing soccer and they're doing their sports but they're learning how to take apart computers and rebuild computers and they are learning about Greek mythology and they're learning about art and so it's just an incredible use of the summer. We hate to see anybody's summer go to waste and it's gotten so hot outside with global warming that a lot of kids if they don't have an organized structured activity are tempted just to stay home and watch TV or just be on their computers all day and this gets them out, it gets them running around, it gets them interacting with other kids and so we're thrilled about what the organizers have been able to do here. Lunch and Learn is a great opportunity for young people not only to just get lunch and breakfast at the summertime but really for them to keep up and to really make sure that they get some, some academic exercise if you will. Right? It's a great opportunity for them to continue to have fun in the summer. So they swim, they work with computers, but they also can bone up on their reading and bone up on their math. That's awesome. The other thing is that we know that the summer feeding program that exists in this county and has been here needs to expand. We have lots of young people. A third of our students are on free and reduced meal service. That means that many of them do not have the amount of food that they need at home. And we need to make sure, as we can, in our partnership with MCPS and Department of Agriculture, to make sure that we have opportunities for kids to eat. I like the most here math and research. Play around. Um, we, we get to play um, on the swings and we and on the playground. I made new friends here, and there's some friends from my school. We do math and learn lots, lots of things. We read, we go to the library, and we play, we go outside, we have lunch and breakfast, and learn other cool stuff. This program is very helpful to them. They enjoy it, they love it, and every year they can't wait to come back to the program. Many of the kids did not know how to swim. As a result of the kids taking swimming, they now can swim. We've been very successful, but we also had to turn kids down. There were other kids that were very much interested, but due to funding, we could not take all the kids that were interested. We would like to have uh, the same type of environment because the, we, this year we had classrooms, we had gym, we have a library, and we want to keep continuing with other kids. We have a more, a higher population in the Latino community, and we have a lot of children who have parents that don't speak English at all. And so it's growing by leaps and bounds, and we're just looking for more and more funding. We even had um, Prince George's County inquire about the program because they would like to have a program like this in their area, in Hyattsville. I wrote an essay about um, how people around the world don't have, don't have clean water and so they can have a f fresh clean glass of water with no energy. And so we're going to actually work on that. And so everyone can have clean water and it will be free. So you could have it anywhere around the world and you don't need electricity. The things I like, like in this camp, is um, playing outside, playing, playing board games inside, math, reading, um, and also, um, and also um, technology. So the Lunch and Learn program is one of these uh, very timely programs that addresses the fact that Montgomery County, frankly, uh, over the last 10, 20, 30 years, the population has become more diverse. 
but it's also become more income diverse. You know, we used to have a much more hom homogenous county. It was middle class, upper middle class, and now we have a whole spectrum. So what we've seen is in the school system in the last few years, uh, the student population now in lots of parts of the county is 50% students who are on free and reduced meals. Now one of the problems is when you come to summertime, a lot of these programs end. And so students who are getting year-round uh, meals through the school system are suddenly out in the summer and without that. So lunch and learn program, it's great. This is actually a unique program that uh, Council Member Jared Smith has led. It's benefiting 110 students yeah. in the area. It's a fantastic program. Uh, students yeah. get instruction in computer learning. They can swim. They're going to get some academic instruction. And uh, they're getting some constructive uh, learning experiences throughout the day. Uh, throughout the state, I'm unaware of anyone else doing it. I know that next year, Jared has a plan to roll it out in Prince George's County as well uh, and some other spots in Montgomery County. So maybe we can work together to make that happen. The future of Lunch and Learn, because it has two goals now. One, to solve food insecurity in Montgomery County, and two, to close the achievement gap because we offer uh, tutoring in math, arithmetic, writing. So we plan to roll out the program to more locations in Montgomery County. We're also going to look at opening sites in Prince George's County. I'm really hopeful for the future of Lunch and Learn. I want to be a pediatrician when I grow up because, well, it's fun and I would love to take care of kids and I also like newborns and stuff like that to take care of them, to hold them. I want to be a pediatrician because I want to follow in my mom's footsteps of being a doctor and I also like um, working with kids so I decided to be a pediatrician. When they grow up I want to be an artist and a scientist and a teacher and the thing I like to do here is math. Ike Bike was actually originally called Lose the Training Wheels, and it was uh, created by a gentleman named Dr. Richard Klein. Um, we changed the name of the organization to I Can Shine in 2012 so that we could offer more programs. Um, I Can Dance is a new program we have, and also I Can Swim. We like the name I Can because everybody can do whatever they want to do. Um, we believe that our program is very inspiring and gives people confidence that they need to be able to accomplish whatever they want to try, and bike riding is certainly one of those things. The goal is to learn how to ride a bicycle, a two-wheeler with no training wheels. What I do is try to keep kids active, biking and walking to school and doing it safely. And there are some students, students with disabilities, who didn't have a chance to learn how to ride a bike. So when I learned about I Can Shine, I realized that I wanted to bring it to Tacoma Park to teach these kids how to ride a bike so they could ride to school. It took a lot of people to get the program here to Tacoma Park. I had to get a grant from the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration. The Safe Routes to School grant funded the program. I got another grant from CVS Health to, um, for some of the other incidentals to bring the program here. I recruited all of the kids, 30 students with disabilities, to come and learn how to ride a bike here with us this week. Then I had to find 60 volunteers two spotters for each rider 
and then I can shine came so they have a bike tech and a floor supervisor who come and they actually run the program day to day. that you really have to be patient with the kids and that it takes time for them to understand and it's just really great. <laughs> when the kids are actually improving and actually understanding how to ride a bike and just learning how to do things that they can actually do that everyone can do. I would definitely recommend it to someone for someone else to volunteer or even like have their kids if they are disabled to come do this program because it's really great. I've learned how to be uh, how to be patient, how to be careful with uh, people, and just uh, and also how to compliment people. It's really fun, and it's fun helping the kids. This has been a great experience so far. Grace has loved riding her bike. You yeah. liked it. Yeah. What's been your favorite part? I like around. You like going around? Yeah. So she's had a really positive experience. She's been excited to come here each day, and she keeps getting a little better and a little steadier, and so we're really excited about that. So they've been really patient with her. She's had some great spotters, and it's been a positive experience. My favorite part is I like to turn the bike. You like to turn the bike around? <laughs> All right. It's just helped her be a little more confident on, on her bike. She rides tandem with my husband, so she's used to being on a bike, but um, riding herself, getting that confidence and some skills has been important. I think we've got more work to do after it's done to help her get the steady as she can be on her bike, but this is definitely a step in the right direction, so we are grateful to Tacoma Park for providing this wonderful experience. It's been wonderful. What do you think, Luke? What do you think of this yeah, bike camp? This is so awesome! <laughs> it's awesome. What's the best part? My best part is try those under those things and you ride with no after no fall. Yeah, and you don't fall. Those special wheels that they have on the back? Yeah. You think that's wonderful yeah. that you can do that? That's great. That's a whole system they've worked out so that people can learn to bike. We've tried everything with Luke. Uh, eventually he just ended up on a tag along with us in the back of the bike. But, you know, He's getting closer to being a teenager, so having some independence, we know eventually he's going to really want to ride a bike on his own. So this is a great program. What I do is I maintain the bikes for our fleet and then I also help fit family bikes. So when parents come in and they bring in bikes from home, I help put the kids in the bikes and then size them up. Um, I'll also assist the floor supervisor and help her with any behavior management needs or spotting needs out on the floor. Since I've been uh, involved in the program, you know, the first day I saw it, it was amazing. I worked with a rider who could barely pedal on the first day and by Friday he was out riding his family bike. So to see that, it was a really powerful experience for me and it just made me want to be involved with I Can Bike. I heard about it from a school listserv and I really wanted to find some place I could volunteer over the summer and this seemed like a great uh, thing to do. It's been really cool to work with uh, so many different kids and get to know them. I feel really invested in all of their ability to learn how to ride a bike. 
definitely teaches you patience and different strategies you can use to work with kids of all different types. I would definitely recommend that anyone work here. Um, they tell you you don't need to know how to ride a bike yourself and it's great to be able to help these kids uh, work through the different challenges of this and see them succeed at the end. A lot of riders get confidence from riding this bike. Um, they're able to engage in an activity, you know, there are a lot of uh, limited choices for kids with disabilities when it comes to physical activity, so it's a lifelong physical activity they can do. It's great to see their smiles when we take the kids up on the bikes on Tandem Tuesday. A lot of them are smiling, so it's just awesome to see how much the kids enjoy it and to see them progress and pick up the biking skill throughout the week. I would like to say thank you to Lucy Nair, who brought this program here to Tacoma Park, Maryland. This is our first time here, and we're so excited to be in this community, um, and we hope to be back next year. The importance of teaching these kids how to ride is that they can be included, they can learn independence and confidence. I've seen kids grow this week and learn how to ride a bike. And so it means now if all the kids are riding in the cul-de-sac together, they can ride too. They won't be the one left sitting on the curb. So it means they'll be included in the neighborhood activities and in the family activities. I've seen volunteers grow this week, signing up to come here and not knowing what they were getting into, but realizing that they could play a huge part in helping a student with special needs learn how to ride a bike has changed their outlook on life.